How's it going everybody? My name is Artori Gold, and today I want to talk about Ash. Now, we've talked about Ash a little bit before, mostly just my first impressions though, and now that she's been out on live, but only in quick play, I really want to talk more about her, a little bit more in depth. Now, I do think I can do a more advanced guide later on in Ranked once she comes out there, but until then, I'm going to go over from all of my impressions and more of a basic guide on how to use her kit, uh, her matchups, her pros and her cons, and everything I've experienced from just spamming her in quick play. So first off, I'd like to say she's fun. She's really, really fun to play. She's so rewarding. Everything about Ash is just amazing. It feels great. Let's start off with her gun called the Viper. There is a hip fire mode and then a scope mode or an ADS, which stands for aim down sights. So you can call it whatever you want, but I want to talk about the hip fire. Okay. This gun actually does a lot of damage when not scoped in. It's weird. I noticed a lot of the time I would just kill people by pressing left click and just using the hip fire, right? It does a lot of damage, and if you have the bullets or ammo to do it, you can fight people off on anybody who tries to get on you. Like, if you get a Genji or something who tries to dive on you, you use your dynamite in their face, and then you just fire a couple of hip fire shots, or your coach gun is what we're going to call it, and then they're dead. It's pretty easy. Honestly, the hip fire does about... 40 damage per shot and you can shoot pretty quickly as long as you're pressing down the left click pretty quickly You can't hold down the left click button But you can press it pretty quickly and it shoots at a pretty decent rate if someone's diving you 40 damage per shot That means all you got to do is shoot five body shots and that'll kill any 200 HP character in the game And then you add like the dynamite and coach gun on top of that and It's pretty effective. You can kind of compare it to the other hit scan characters like McCree and soldier. It's pretty much on that same level. I mean, it's not as good as McCree. Like, if somebody dives a McCree, flashbang right-click, especially with those buffs that are coming out on the right-click, that's going to be way power at close range. But I mean, it's still a pretty good amount of damage. If I was diving a Ash, I would be a little worried about it, unless I was D.Va. D.Va, hard counter. But we'll get into matchups later. Let me try to stay on track for a little bit. So, one of the things about the hip fire is that it does do a lot of damage, but one thing to keep in mind is only the first two shots that you fire will be accurate, and then right on your third and fourth shot and so on, it's going to start adding a little bit of randomization and spread. In other words, it's going to be a little less accurate, kind of similar if you were on Soldier 76 and you held down left click, you know, the accuracy isn't as good and the damage kind of spreads a little bit. Now I want to get into the main thing, which is her zoom in mode or her ADS, aim down sight, similar to like Anna. That's what we usually call it as the ADS. So when you zoom in with the gun, you're going to be doing way more damage, more DPS than if you were to just hold down your hip fire shots on somebody, right? I think somebody did the math and compared the DPS. If you were unscoped and you were hitting all of your shots, you do about 71 DPS with non-crits. And on the other hand of things, if you were to do all your shots scoped, it'll be 86 DPS with non-crits. So when you're zoomed in, you're going to do about 85 damage per shot. And then when you have the damage fall off, which happens about 30 to 60 meters, it can go down to about 42 damage per shot. So basically it can get cut in half. It's kind of devastating. The fall off damage is actually very noticeable on Ash. For example, if you were to get in a 1v1 situation with a Widowmaker who's really far away, you lose. You don't have that advantage. I played a lot of Ash, and you can maybe outplay the Widowmaker, and you kind of need a headshot in order to really beat that 1v1. But I mean, if you compare the situation, Widowmaker at a long range has every advantage over you. You do have advantages over pretty much every other character. Widowmaker and Hanzo. I would say Hanzo is another one that you might not want to risk it. Although Ash can do a really good amount of long range damage compared to a Widowmaker and Hanzo, especially at a top tier level, they have the advantage in that 1v1. Again, they take one bullet to kill you in a headshot, right? Or arrow, whatever. But with Ash, it's going to take a lot more work to do that. And you're going to have to do more shots. And at the same time, you're going to feel those shots whizzing past your head. And it's kind of a stressful situation. So I noticed you don't really want to be taking those 1v1s depending on the range. If you're fighting any other character in the game, um, the damage fall off doesn't really matter too much. Maybe against a soldier, I think soldier does a pretty decent damage at far range. But other than that, I still think you can beat the soldier in the 1v1. But ultimately it comes down to the mechanical skill and whose mechanical skill is better. So overall, besides that, the damage on a headshot is insane. 170 damage. So that means all you need to do is throw in a melee attack, which is 30 damage, and that's 200 right there. 
allowing you to kill any squishy character, right? If you're in melee range, uh, one headshot is going to kill like a Tracer and a Baby Diva. And if you can get a headshot and melee at close range, then bam, that's basically a one shot right there. Because you can go into that melee immediately follow up after that shot. So it's pretty powerful. You have some one shot potential. But I don't recommend getting into close range. I mean, if you're getting in that close range for the headshot melee attack, although that's really good against squishies, it also probably means that the enemy is diving you and they might be in a better situation than you are at that moment. So you might want to keep that in mind. One thing that is very strong with Ash, though, is Mercy. I don't know if you've had a Mercy pocket you with a damage boost. It is insane. You do so much damage. Mercy damage boosting you and you get a headshot, that is 221 damage. That is one-shotting people. Easy, no problem. Unless it's like, you know, 250 health people and beyond, or maybe like a Brig armor effect. But other than that, you headshot everything. But I mean, and bam, one headshot, and you got McCree, Soldier, Sombra, Zenyatta, Lucio, another Ash. You know, all these characters, they go down instantly. I also think the Mercy buffs recently made her a lot more viable, so I think a Mercy Ash works really well on certain maps. If you have the ability to, you know, not heal your teammates as much and focus more on the damage boost pocket, there's a lot of value out of that, especially if you got a good Ash player. Anyways, one of the other things that's interesting about the ADS mode is, well... You can jump while ADSing. Now, I know this might seem kind of weird, but when you're playing Widowmaker and Ana, I don't know if you noticed, but if you jump, it cancels the scope. But with Ash, it doesn't. So it allows you to have some really interesting, like, jump headshots over walls or cover. It's happened maybe like one or two times in about of nine games, but it is something you could do, and I would recommend trying it. It's kind of interesting, and it feels really weird, especially if you've played a lot of Widow um, and Ana. It just feels weird. Like, why is she allowed to do it, but these two aren't? But, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I like that. And one of the other big drawbacks, of course, is while you are zoomed, you have 20% less movement speed. It's not that big of a factor, but it is something to notice. If you want to get somewhere quickly, you're gonna have to get out of scope mode. You don't want to be in it the whole time. You don't move, like, at the same speed or whatever. So, keep that in mind. Anyways, I want to go into the dynamite. The dynamite is actually insane. I, I The damage on this thing is actually crazy. I mean, it does a lot. The burn damage alone does a hundred damage. That's a hundred damage over time with the dynamite burn, not alone the explosion damage. If you hit someone with the explosion damage, it can do 75 maximum. You hit someone on the very center of that, that's 175 damage. Follow it up with one hip fire or one melee. Bam, they're dead if they don't get really good heals from like, I don't know, like a brig or or an Ananade to save them, or maybe a Nano Boost, right? You gotta commit a lot of things to try and save them, or else they're just gonna die. And, yeah, the Dynamite's great. The Dynamite is definitely gonna be a little bit more of a learning curve to learning how to use it. It's extremely powerful. It has a lot of outplay potential. You can use it around corners. You can use it around shields. Um, it can be a great way to gain a lot of ult charge. It's also a really good thing that you can throw on enemies to disengage from them. Well, one of the best things that you can do is you can actually use your Coach Gun to blow up the dynamite. So if an enemy dives you like a Winston, you can throw the dynamite and then immediately follow up with the coach gun. So you blow the dynamite up in their face. You do a lot of damage with the coach gun and it also knocks you back or disengages you. And they're sitting there and they're taking a bunch of damage and you can just uh, hip fire at them with your gun. So it's a great way to disengage and at the same time dealing a lot of damage. It's really effective against squishy heroes too. Like if a Genji tries to dash you, as long as you know he doesn't have deflect or you wait for the deflect to be over, you do that dynamite on him and coach gun and he'll pretty much be dead every single time. It all depends on how many pellets of the coach gun is going to go into him, but it's a lot of damage. The dynamite does a ton. That's 100 tick damage. All you really got to do and think about is the other 100 damage. The explosion of the dynamite does like 30 at minimum, right? So you got 130 damage and then 70 damage to finish him off, which your hip fire does 40 damage. So that's two hip fires or a hip fire and a melee for 70. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do to kill a squishy. It's not hard. It's very easy. Ash can really just peel for herself and most times get away with whoever dives on you. I mean, I had no problem with a lot of characters that dived on me. Genji, Tracers, Winstons, not really a big issue for Ash. It's really easy. You might not have a flashbang like McCree, um, and it takes a little bit more work to outskill them or outplay them with your dynamite and coach gun abilities, but it's 
pretty easy to do as long as you have a lot of playtime on Ash and you understand how the dynamite really works and more of the physics of it. One of the things about the dynamite when I throw it, I like to stand completely still when I throw the dynamite, or alternatively, I hit the A or D key to move left or right and then kind of hide to where I want the dynamite to be, and then I don't move my mouse at all because your dynamite is going to move in a completely straight line, and the Overwatch dev team made it, so if you stand completely still and you throw the dynamite, it's extremely easy to hit. It goes in a very predictable straight line pattern, although it moves very slow in the air, but I think that was intentional because they want to make it very easy for you to shoot and detonate early. So what I like to do is, is I, I don't obviously want to stand still most of the time with the dynamite. I mean, I can get away with it occasionally, but what you can do is instead don't move your mouse, throw the dynamite, move to the left or right a little bit, and then when you got the dynamite where you want it, then move the AD key back to where you are without moving your mouse and bam, you can shoot the dynamite pretty easily. Anyways, one thing that you need to watch out for with the dynamite is that D.Va can eat it. I don't know if she used to be able to not eat it, but I was just playing it like a ton, and D.Va can eat the dynamite now. I don't remember that happening at BlizzCon when I played her at the demos there, but yeah, they changed that. She can eat the dynamite now, and that sucks. This is one thing that I want to talk about. D.Va is your hard counter. I mean, it makes sense, right? D.Va's also a really hard counter to other hitscan characters, and kind of always has been. That's kind of what she's good at. Her defense matrix stops high noon and visor and all your damage. She jumps into you, uses micro missiles and it's annoying and yeah she can eat your dynamite she, she eats your shots she's able to chase you wherever you try to go diva is really the biggest issue with ash so you really want to be careful with that however when it comes to winston's no problem i have no problem with winston's whatsoever it's just the divas you have to worry about i would say diva is definitely your hardest counter when it comes to ash and maybe widowmaker but also it kind of depends at what range you're at if widowmaker has uh, a very long distance on you then yeah she has the advantage obviously but if you're up a little bit closer you can definitely outplay her anyways another big thing that i noticed you have to be careful with the dynamite blowing up in your face because you can hurt yourself and die to it um kind of silly but yeah you want to watch out for that i noticed when you try to use the coach gun to blow up the dynamite although it's very powerful and very easy to land on the dynamite and explode it that way that's also the most dangerous way to do it and you have to be really careful when you use the coach gun because if you do it too close you're going to hit yourself with the dynamite but if you do it too far then the coach gun is going to miss the shot on dynamite and it won't explode you have to be really careful with that. You really have to balance it. Other than that, I want to talk about the Coach Gun, which is your main disengage ability, but also an extremely good mobility tool. So unlike McCree and Soldier, who need to use their feet like plebs to get onto the high ground, Ash just needs to use her coach gun, shoot at the ground, and her vertical leap with it is insane. You can get to just about any high ground spot that you want to, and really it's just like Widow's Grapple. I mean, obviously as a hit scan, you really are the best when you're on the high ground, and you don't have that many people contesting you, and you can just, you know, shoot at people and scope up, and you don't have to worry about anybody hitting you, and that's where you excel. So, McCree and Soldier always has this long travel time in order to get up where they want to be, and Soldier a little bit less, because he has Sprint. But I mean, Ash, bam, you just shift once, you're up all the way in the air, you can get to any piece of high ground you need, and that's really a big strength with Ash. I think it's underestimated just how good the coach gun is. You can use it to disengage, you can do it for damage, you can get up to the high ground. I mean, it's so versatile, it makes Ash's kit really powerful. It makes you good against people diving on you, it makes you good to escape. It has a lot of potential for you to like shoot on the ground, get above an enemy's head, and then shoot them while they're below you and the enemy is like where did she go you can use it in a lot of different ways one of the things about coach gun too is that it does a lot of damage actually if you're up close in melee range with the coach gun and you hit them with every single pellet it does 90 damage that's huge that's a lot of damage that's a big chunk if a tank dives on you bam coach gun you're out of there and that's 90 damage into him that's a really good way to disengage you leave him a little present and there's 90 damage gone that's for you but anyways, Coach Gun is an extremely powerful ability, and I think it has a pretty long cooldown, just like the Dynamite. I think they're both at 10 seconds. One of the things you will have to worry about are your cooldowns. I mean, those cooldowns are extremely important for Ash. You want to use the Dynamite a lot for your DPS to keep the maximum damage up there, but you also want to keep the Coach Gun to go onto high ground. But at the same time, you don't want to use it too early. Like, if you use the Coach Gun to get up to the high ground too early, then enemy team can dive you, and they know, hey, this guy does 
doesn't have coach gun. He doesn't have it for 10 seconds, so I can just leap on him and kill him. So you gotta be really careful with the coach gun. You wanna be able to use it as much as possible on enemies for the disengage. But at the same time, it's really good for the high ground. You really have to make sure nobody sees you or you have proper support from your team or a lot of space. So when you do use it to get on the high ground, you're not immediately going to get dove. That's very important with Ash, and you will have to manage that 10 second cooldown with it pretty heavily. But other than that, I want to go into Bob, which actually stands for Big Omnic Butler. Surprisingly, I didn't know that. Well, anyways, I think Bob is insane. I think he deals an insane amount of pressure and presence to any team fight. I mean, he's an absolute unit. If you put Bob in a very good position, it demands the attention of the enemy or else he'll just melt everybody. There's a lot of benefits to Bob, but there's also a lot of cons to him. One of the big things is that you can heal him and nano him to increase his effectiveness, but the enemy team can also shut him down. You can EMP him, you can hack him, you can stun him, you can freeze him, you can sleep him, and that makes Bob really not useful. So you gotta be really careful with the Bob placement. I mean, Bob does have 1200 HP, and he won't die anytime soon, but he also is kind of vulnerable to some pretty easy things like EMP, Hack, Stun, or Freeze. I mean, there's a lot of characters who can do things to him, especially Hack. I mean, if Sombra gets a hack off on Bob, I mean, it's just devastating, and Sleep Dart too. And both of those are characters that are pretty meta, so you'll see an Ana and a Sombra a lot of the time. At, at least Ana. You'll see Ana, like, all the time, right? So landing a Sleep Dart on Bob, it's really not difficult, and it takes a lot of his, uh, maximum uptime away, which also takes away from his damage. So when you're looking to use Bob, you might also want to try and keep into consideration the enemy team's cooldowns, mainly Sleep Dart because Ana is so meta right now. Try to use Bob after you see Ana use Sleep Dart, and you'll definitely see that your Bob does a lot more damage when you do that. But otherwise, Bob does have 1200 HP, meaning he's not going to die anytime soon. He also has the ability to capture objectives, which makes him really strong for cleaning up any overtime situations or if you just want to put him on the point because you don't want to touch it. I mean, how many times have you played Widow, Soldier, or McCree and you're like, I don't want to go and touch the point. I can't do that. I have to be sitting here and doing damage. I got this amazing piece of high ground. I need somebody else to touch the point. I can't do that. I'm just going to die if I do it. Well, don't worry. We got Bob. Bob's gonna do that for you. You throw Bob onto that point, then you coach gun onto some high ground, and bam, you're just able to do damage from afar, and everybody's gonna be focused on Bob on the point. So you don't have to worry about touching the objective as much as other characters would, like McCree and Soldier. Another big thing about his ultimate is when you activate it, he's gonna charge in a straight line in whatever direction you're aiming, and he's gonna continue going forward until he hits an enemy or wall. I mean, he'll go all the way. All the way. I mean, he'll go off the map and die. Seriously, he'll he'll just charge. And ideally, you want Bob to ram into somebody. As you know, when Bob hits somebody, he's going to knock them up into the air. And that allows you to shoot pretty easily. If you're Ash, you can hit an airborne target. I mean, they move kind of slow. Like, their momentum in the air is pretty slow. So they're very easy to hit. But that's not the best part of it. The best part is, it does 120 damage to anybody he hits up there. That's a lot. I mean, you put 85 damage from a scoped shot on there. Bam, that's a 200 health squishy dead. So yeah, you have a lot of maximum damage potential with that knockup on Bob, and it also just makes it really easy for you to land shots on people who are ever in the air as well. You can also combine ultimate abilities with it. I mean, you knock someone into the air, and then you can throw a diva bomb in the air, or you can EMP them, or you can do a Hammond to do a, another slam on them right as they just land, so they get knocked back up into the air a second time. There's a lot of combo potentials with it that make it really fun, and Bob's gonna do a bunch of damage right after it, too. Ideally, you want to use Bob in an open space. Obviously, he wants to be able to hit as many targets as possible. Right after his knockup, he's going to basically just stand still and go into turret mode. So if he's in a bad spot, he's going to be very easy for the enemy team to just ignore. Like, Bob still has to worry about line of sight. So if you're not in sight of him, he can just go behind a corner and just be like, all right, I'm just going to ignore Bob. He's going to go away in like six seconds. So that's why it's better to use Bob in a really open area or maybe even on a piece of high ground or put it on the objective when an objective is like really close to being capped or something. So then the enemy team is forced to deal with him some way, right? And I think that's the best way to use Bob other than using him to combo with like another ability, which could be really fun to do too. 
So what I want to do next is go over the matchups for Ash and what characters she's really good at dealing with and some, you know, that she's not so good at. The counters, the soft counters, the hard counters, and so on. So first up, D.Va. D.Va is probably the hardest counter to Ash. You're gonna have the most trouble with her. I mean, Defense Matrix stops everything. It eats the dynamite. It's gonna stop all of your damage. It's gonna be really awful to deal with D.Va. You can maybe get away with it and outplay her, but ultimately going for the kill on a D.Va in a 1v1 situation is very unfair favorable. So basically, you just kind of want to play it a little bit safer when it comes to D.Va. Next, you have Orisa. You do a ton of damage to Orisa, and it's super easy to hit headshots on her, and her shield is pretty easy to navigate around easily with the dynamite. Like, you just throw the dynamite above her head, you explode it, and then you're able to get that damage on her because the shield isn't going to cover her. So, Orisa, other than that, you don't want to stick and do damage to shields. I'm going to go into Reinhardt with that as well. You don't want to ever sit and do damage to shields as Ash. That's, you're not really good at that, right? If you're sitting there and you're trying to do scoped shots or hip fire shots at a shield I guess it's okay but you have such a long reload time it's not really worth it and the DPS just isn't there compared to other heroes so if you're trying to kill a Rhine or Orisa with the shield up it's going to be difficult but at least with Orisa you have a lot of potential to do dynamites over the head and things like that with Reinhardt it's a little bit more difficult but it is possible to do it but I do think it's much easier to finish off an Orisa compared to a Reinhardt because she has less health and her head hitbox is much bigger Moving on to Roadhog, he's very easy to just get ult charge off of. I mean, you just, he's a big target. It's very easy, very big, slow moving. You can basically just sit there ADS and hit zoomed in shots on him the whole time. Really great way to farm ult charge. You won't kill him that quickly. It's going to take a little bit of help. I mean, most of the time, if you get the Roadhog low, he's just going to vape and walk away. You do have to be a little bit careful of his hook, but with your coach gun, you can use it just up in the air. If you see the thing coming, uh, you can just use your coach gun to get to the high ground or escape and get in a better position and then continue to do damage to Roadhog. So the matchup's pretty favorable on your end unless you're up close then yeah the Roadhog's gonna get you up close but at a certain distance Ash has the advantage every time. With Winston you're great against Winston. Winston dives you so what? You use your coach gun bam you're out of there and you can just not worry about it. If he has his ultimate then that's a different story but ultimately Ash does great against Winston. Your coach gun is a perfect way to disengage with him and you can force a lot of damage onto him and pressure onto him a lot more so than if you were playing like a Widowmaker because Widowmaker's SMG isn't going to compare to the damage that Ash deals especially if you're able to dynamite him. Next you have Wrecking Ball. Uh, you're, you know, if he slams Don you, you, I mean, you know, he's not hard to deal with. You can coach gun him away, disengage pretty easily, but he's got a lot of health and he's a really fast moving target. I wouldn't waste too much time shooting at a wrecking ball if he's just trying to be a distraction, but I do think it's pretty easy to get a lot of ult charge on him as long as his shields aren't up because you got to keep in mind that the shields on wrecking ball aren't going to give you any ult charge, so you kind of lose out on that. If you see a wrecking ball with shields, I kind of just ignore him unless I know he can get killed. Uh, you know, if you get support from your team, you can hack him or something like that then you don't have to worry about it and you can just kill him through the shields. But ultimately, it's not really worth your time shooting at a Wrecking Ball. I would much rather shoot at other characters unless he's right in your face then you're forced to shoot at him and coach gun away. But other than that, it's like whatever. He doesn't do too much to you as long as you use your disengage properly. And if he does use his slam dunk on you and you're caught airborne, you can use your coach gun in the air to get away and escape too. So that's a really good way to avoid his minefield as well and kind of just get out of the range where he wants you to be. Next up, you have Zarya. Zarya doesn't have any armor, and she has only 400 health. So as soon as you see that personal shield go down she's gonna die. I mean, you, it's very easy to beat a Zarya as long as she doesn't have too much high energy, but overall, you can just fire her right out of range of the beam, and it's pretty easy not to shoot a Zarya bubble as Ash because your hit scan. If there's a hit scan player shooting at a Zarya bubble, I'm pretty disappointed. It's pretty easy to just stop shooting a Zarya bubble. The only person that it's probably forgivable to are the projectile players, right? But if you're playing a hitscan character, don't shoot a Zarya bubble. Zarya should not have energy from you. She should be a very easy target for you to deal with, and you can easily outrange her and get away from her. Just be cautious of the personal barrier, but other than that, yeah, it's really easy. Next up, you have Bastion. I mean, depending on the if Bastion's getting support or not, he's really easy for you to deal with. You can outrange him, and he's standing still, and just bam, 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 you keep shooting 
shooting him with your ADS and eventually he'll die. It just ultimately depends if they're pirate shipping or not. And even if they are pirate shipping, um, basically your dynamite is really good against pirate ship. It's You can get it at a certain angle and it's going to hit everybody and do a bunch of burn damage. So you do pretty well against Bastion, but I wouldn't say you're the main counter to it. But overall, if the Bastion's getting zero support, Ash does great in it. Doomfist is a difficult matchup. Uh, you can do a lot of damage to him and your disengage can be pretty good, but it really depends on where Doomfist comes in on you and how good your reaction speed is. I mean, if you have a really good reaction speed and you're able to use your coach gun before Doomfist goes in on you with an E or a punch, then you're able to get out of the way and then pretty much clean up the fight after that. But if Doomfist hits you first, then you're pretty much dead. So you gotta be kind of cautious with that. You do a decent amount of damage to Doomfist at hip fire range. You're not gonna kill him like super quickly, but being able to coach gun him and dynamite him is going to definitely help you, but he does have 250 health, so you're not going to kill him as quickly as you would with the 200 HP people. If Doomfist is going in on you like really hard, you probably need to headshot in order to really win that 1v1. It's a harder matchup, and it depends on a lot of situations, but I do think that Ash can come out on top. It really comes down to pure reaction speed, more than anything. If you have better reaction speed with the Doomfist, then you'll probably come out on top on that one. With Genji, I think you beat Genji. Honestly, he's very easy to deal with. Just don't shoot the coach gun at his deflect. I mean, you could and get knocked back really far away if that's what your goal is, but I think you do a lot of damage. You can kill 200 health characters very easily as long as they're not able to get support from somebody else, or if you just have the equal amount of support and it's fair ground, then I definitely think you have the advantage. I mean, your dynamite alone is going to get everybody below 100 health with the burn damage minimum, so you have the advantage of using your coach gun which has 90 damage up close and then you just use your hip fire for 40 damage and you can even throw a 30 damage melee in there i mean the damage adds up so quickly you'll be surprised i don't think genji is gonna ha be too much of an issue with ash but i do think you need to have the dynamite in order to really beat him and then really it comes down to deflect i mean obviously if you're gonna hit into his deflect that's bad and you'll probably die but if you're able to wait out the deflect or maybe just use your coach gun on the deflect to get back really quickly then maybe you don't have to worry about it that way either but you're gonna come out with some damage so it might be a disadvantage to do that if genji has his ult you'll probably die in that 1v1 but that's about it for that hanzo if you're at a really long range he has the one shot potential on you and you don't because you have fall off damage so he wins in those 1v1s and it's not really worth it for you to take it at a medium range i think you have a bigger advantage and you can definitely burst him even quicker than his storm bow if hanzo uses his e on you it will do a lot of damage but Ash's headshot and damage potential is even higher than Hanzo's E, as weird as that is. As long as you land the headshot, it's so easy to kill the Hanzo. It really is. And I don't think it's very hard to do at the medium range either. At long range, that's where Hanzo has the advantage, though. Junkrat, you beat him every single time. W what's there to say? <laughs> Junkrat gets destroyed, no question. Just don't get into a trap. One thing of note, though, is you can't one-shot a Junkrat tire. I tried it. It leaves it with 15 health, which is rather unfortunate. So maybe you can finish it off with a coach gun, but... But at the same time, probably not. You probably need to do a scoped shot, then a hip fire shot to really finish off a Junkrat tire. That's really the only outplay potential that comes from that. Anyways, we have McCree. You beat him in the long range. You beat him at the medium range. Just don't go to the close range, because if he flashbangs you, then you're dead. May. May is pretty similar to McCree. If May gets up close to you, she can freeze you, and if she times her ice wall or ice block, she can block your coach gun from hitting her further away, or block your dynamite, which is a lot of your damage potential. So May has a lot of ways to outplay you, but at the same time, you have a lot of ways to get away from her. If I were doing that 1v1, I would just use my coach gun to get to the high ground, because May's ice wall doesn't give her as much vertical height as Ash's coach gun does, so I think Ash has a lot more potential to get to the high ground and escape the May, and most Mays don't use their ice wall for high ground potential anymore. It's actually more just to block off tanks or block off choke points. I really see Mays use their ice walls to get on the high ground, and really that's the strong point of Ash in that 1v1. If you get to the high ground, then May's not going to be able to reach you, and she's not an issue at all. Then, of course, we have Farah. I mean, what's there to say? You can beat Farah very easily, and it's pretty difficult for a Soldier 76 to deal with the Farah Mercy, but the burst damage from McCree and Ash make it a lot easier because, you know, those Mercy heals on a Farah is very difficult depending on the range, but as Ash, you have a really good time against Farah, but just make sure she doesn't go too close onto you, and especially watch out for the Mercy Farah. It's not too bad at long range. You can definitely do a lot more damage to her, and you can use your Coach Gun to get into the air, so Farah has a lot harder time time hitting rockets on air targets or airborne targets and it makes it really easy for you to shoot her in the air too honestly because your momentum is actually pretty slow so it's pretty easy to aim while inside the air 
Reaper, same thing. Just don't let him get close. I mean, if he has his Wraith form, then he's going to be able to dodge your Coach Gun, uh, which would normally knock him back. Or even he can use it to dodge your Dynamite damage, uh, which is basically the biggest thing that you need to watch out for. I wouldn't detonate the Dynamite right away unless I use it with my Coach Gun like instantly in his face. But other than that, I would probably look to wait for his Wraith form to be over and then Coach Gun uh, Dynamite after that. Soldier 76, I mean, you beat him at the medium to long range easily. He is going to use his healing field, and it might be a little bit harder to do the 1v1 then, but if you land the headshots, you win. Ultimately, it might be better for you to do damage to him, force his healing field, or force him to run away, and then re-engage after you use your coach gun to get in a better position, and you can kill him after the healing field is over a lot easier than when it's on. Uh, Sombra, very easy to kill. I mean, I don't think she's too much of an issue. If she hacks you, it kind of sucks, but I mean, you can still headshot her for 170 damage and follow up with like a melee, depending on how close she is. I don't think hack affects Ash too terribly. I mean, your damage potential is still there. Obviously, your two abilities, Coach Gun and Dynamite, do a lot too, so you will be at a little bit of a disadvantage, but it's not impossible for you to just kill a Sombra outright before she even translocates out. It really comes down to the range that you two are at, and if you're able to land a headshot. I mean, just land one headshot on her, and the Sombra's going to immediately translocate. Even if maybe the headshot won't kill her, she's gonna get spooked, right? So, Symmetra, I mean, when is this 1v1 ever gonna happen? I, I don't know. Your hip fire kills a sentry in, like, one hit, so that's cool. She's not gonna really hit you with the left-click damage. She might do a right-click orb, but, I mean, coach gun into the air. Well, she's not gonna hit you with those in the air. Symmetra players with the right-clicks are kind of dangerous that they can land them, but too far in between. You don't see many Symmetra that are gonna do that. Um, it might be kind of dangerous if she uses the teleporter to get into close range, but I mean, just use your coach gun onto the high ground. Symmetra can't touch you up there. And you don't have to worry about the, the Symmetra turrets, really. They're very easy to kill. Uh, some characters have a tougher time killing them, but you have no problem, so don't even worry about it. Torbjorn, his head hitbox is super easy to hit. So yeah, go crazy. You're gonna do a lot of damage to the turrets. It's very easy for Ash to kill the turret. It's very easy to hit a headshot on Torbjorn. His head hitbox is huge, and I think you have a huge advantage in Torbjorn. I think you win that fight against Torbjorn very easily. Moving on to Tracer. She's very quick. She's nimble, but you can one-shot her. As long as you get a headshot on her, she's done for. If not, you could probably just outplay her. Use a bunch of hip shots, which might be harder to hit, but you do a lot of pressure and damage, 40 per shot, so you need about four shots on Tracer in order to kill her with uh, all body shots, and then if you know where her recall is going to be, you can throw a dynamite and kind of predict it, and then blow her up. As soon as her recall is gone, dynamite's just gonna kill her straight up with the 70 explosion and the 100 burn damage. Even then, it's just gonna force her to retreat regardless. I think a good Tracer can be really difficult for an Ash to deal with if she's able to close the gap, but I don't think it's impossible for you to beat her. There's a lot of outplay in this matchup, and I really like it. It's some of the most fun and most high intense, like, it's just such a high and intense moment in that 1v1. Next up, Widowmaker. I mean, don't try to fight her at long range. She has a huge advantage. She can one-shot you, and it takes you a lot more shots with the fall-off damage. At medium to close range, you can beat her. No problem. But it's still kind of a risk. You really have to judge for yourself if this is the right distance to be fighting her or not. Ana, really easy for you to kill. I mean, any support's pretty easy for you to kill. Ana is no exception. 200 health, you get a really good amount of damage onto her. What you want to do is you want to wait for Ana to start shooting in scoped shots, and then when she's doing that, she's going to be really focused on healing her team. You can throw a dynamite right at her, and it's very easy to just blow her up with that and then follow up with a body shot to kill her. So yeah, you're very good against Ana. Brig is a little tougher to deal with. You don't really want to waste time shooting at her barrier, but at the same time, you kind of could if you want to because it's only 500 health and you can kind of break through it kind of easily it's like what like four shots with your ads eh, it's okay overall though your dynamite is going to be the best thing against brig you throw that dynamite above her shield or to the side it's very easy to get that damage on her and then from there you can just do hip fires or long range shots and just keep her at long range as long as she doesn't get up close to you you're fine or just go on the high ground your dynamite works great against her lucio he can be annoying but you can also use your coach gun to kind of knock him off of the walls occasionally and you can use your dynamite damage to really apply pressure to him i think it's very easy to lay dynamites on lucio's um, and it's very easy to just stay calm and don't worry about the lucio's damage because you're going to out damage him in the 1v1 just stand still and aim your shots on lucio if you can just focus on raw mechanical skill and i think you'll beat him no problem mercy is a weird matchup i mean you want to go for the healers as much as possible if you're going against the pharaoh mercy i think it's easier for you to aim for the pharaoh than it is for the mercy but i don't think it's wrong for you to try to 
shoot the Mercy, but if you're not hitting the shots on Mercy, because I know her hitbox is kind of difficult to hit, then just hit other people. I mean, your damage potential is insane. You could shoot and kill people through Mercy's healing. It's not that hard to do as Ash, especially if you're at a closer range where there's no damage fall off, and if you're landing headshots. Don't even worry about Mercy healing. It's not going to affect or stop your damage output at all. So it's as good as it is to focus on Mercy. If you're not able to hit those shots, then don't worry about it. Focus the people she's healing. You can kill them through that. The healing per second is not an issue. It is with Ana, however. Don't do it against Ana. Moira! Just wait for her fade. You want to hit Moira, but you don't want to use your dynamite too early. If you use your dynamite on her, uh, then she's just going to fade away from it and just avoid all of that damage. And the dynamite is a crew crucial part of your maximum damage potential. So you always want to look to try and do that on Moira after the fade. And then really that's all there is to that matchup. Um, and if she's too close to you, just use your coach gun to get to the high ground and try to avoid the orbs as much as possible. And don't feel too pressured when she's right clicking you. I mean, you can out kill her. The right click takes a long time to kill you so don't feel too much pressure and zenyatta oh you destroy him i mean no question just just poor zenyatta has the easiest hitbox in the world i don't know it's, it's kind of similar to torbjorn it's weird widowmaker has such an easy time killing zen I, every hit scan character has an easy time killing Zenyatta, and Ash is no exception. So don't feel bad. You, you can bully Zenyatta very easily, and you can also probably just get in his face and hip fire and coach gun him and probably kill him that way too. It's not too hard. It really depends on the skill of the Zenyatta itself. So anyways, this video was a little long, and I'm sorry about that. It was more of just a basic overview of all of the abilities and the pros and cons to Ash, and maybe what your mindset is going to be going into it. In the future, when she hits ranked, I will be going hard. I will be playing her a lot, and I will be sure to go over some in-depth VOD gameplay reviews once I have the opportunity. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know how you like Ash. I'm in love with her. I think she is amazing, but that's all I have for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.